Hey girls. Okay. All the kids have got their their friends here to visit. It's kind of like a pretty special treat for these other kids. They all live in town. They don't really know about horses and stuff, so they get to come out here and play and run around and have a good time. I think it's awesome. I'm just putting on the bridle and buckle this. Okay, let's ride first. Just make sure to stay out of their way. So kind of like ride like more right yeah. here. Yeah, it's right here. Hey dad, which brow do you mean he is? Yeah, it's expensive to keep these horses. So my cost is running me about $550 a month just to keep them alive and on the place. So when you figure that up, I don't know, that's uh, what about $7,000 a year. And then you figure the cost, you know, if you want to breed a horse, you figure the cost of the semen and the vet and then mare care. Oh, you're going to run about $3,500 to $4,000 just for a, a, a mid-grade level stallion. Care of the mare while she's pregnant, then care of the mare of the foal before you breed them. Uh, it's it gets it gets on up there. You probably you know you know if we were really realistic about the cost of raising a foal and getting it to the to the stage to where it can be ridden. Oh, I'm just going to take a guess in a round number and say you're going to be around twelve fifteen thousand dollars. A person looking to spend fifteen twenty thousand dollars on a two year old, it really isn't uh, you know that's not all that much money when you put it all into perspective. So. All right, so we're dealing with an issue right here with Magnolia. Just gonna show you guys what it is here. We're, she's just buddy sour. She just has to get back to these other horses no matter what. She's getting agitated. You see, you see what's going on right here? She just wants to drift back over here. So what we're gonna do, she cannot stay focused. So I'm gonna let her come over here to these other horses, right? And then when she gets here, I'm gonna make her work. She's gonna trot circles. You see her ducking and diving and trying to get to the gate. And, and all of them go through this. You gotta teach them that the gate is not the place that they wanna be, you know? This is the same principle that we, we talk about this all the time, you know? Make them uncomfortable in the place that they, they wanna be and make them comfortable in the place where you want them to be. That way, they start to seek comfort away from the gate, other horses, the barn, whatever, right? Now she's ducking back even a little bit sooner than she did before. Look, she wants to lope to get back. And guys, that tells me that I'm on the right track. If you're trying to cure something in your horse, you can expect it to get better, or sorry, to get worse before it gets better. And <laughs> it's funny, but if it does get worse, then you know you're on the right track, right? If it's not getting any worse, that means that they're pretty comfortable and that you're probably not getting, making any headway, right? Oh, that's nice. Look how soft you got right there. Nice. Horses are always seeking their own personal comfort. They're just like us, you know. Humans have the, humans have the unique ability to force themselves into out of their comfort zone. Horses don't really do that, right? Horses just want to be comfortable all the time, but you've got to give them something, you know, you've got to show them, you, you've, how do I say it? You know, you've got to get them to seeking the comfort where you want them to be. So where they want to be is uncomfortable, right? Where I want it to, to be is comfortable. And then after, uh, over a, a long period of time, they know that staying with the rider is the most comfortable place for them to be. Hi, this is Richard Boatwright. If you like what you've seen here, then you might consider becoming a member of B1 Horsemanship. 
You can sign up at b1horsemanship.com.